completely different topic, lockpicking. Uh, there will be an ongoing lockpick uh, demonstration and training uh, downstairs. I don't know how they call that floor. I think floor B or, or oh, floor, okay, the, the, the second floor. Um, so I will be here one hour after this is uh, over. So at two o'clock, from two to five, I will be downstairs and uh, people can play with locks, can pick locks. Um, but it's a completely different subject. But uh, it seems that m many people are interested in that. So I just had that mention. Um, also, there's a special pick set made for this conference that's available only in a very limited edition. And it will be sold, I think, one hour after this show, uh, where they sell the T-shirts. So if you're interested in that, uh, uh, it's going to be $25, um, but the picks are really excellent. I, uh, I tested them, and it's, it's really become a very nice set. It's, um, <laughs> this is not the lock picking panel yet. Uh, I could cr try to grab one out of my... Well, anyway, I, I think just, just go check here where they sell the T-shirts uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes after this talk, and they will be for sale there. But as I said, it's going to be very limited edition, so uh, grab it fast if you're interested in it, because uh, they will probably be sold out uh, pretty quick. Uh, I don't think that we'll make it with the supply we got till f uh, before tomorrow, before the lockpick panel. But uh, we'll see uh, what happens. But definitely, after that's uh, over, the, the sets will be gone. That's for sure. Uh, okay, where are you at? <laughs> uh. It's, uh, it's also, I'm, I'm very happy to see so many of you because on the other side, uh, Bruce Schneier is uh, talking. Hey, don't go. Uh, but Bruce Schneier is talking and I really expected it to be much less crowded as it is now, but I'm really thrilled to see so many people are interested in this interesting topic. Um, Ed and I are going to cover the, the, the radio spectrum. That's actually what it's about and, and what's there and what you can do with it. Some, some things you can do with it are quite amusing. Um, the government is trying to encrypt more and more of their signals, so there's much less interesting stuff for us. But uh, still, th there's many interesting things to be found, and even when encryption is used on these signals, um, st still some intelligence can be gathered from that. And I hope we can, uh, we, 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 we can show you. We'll cover a whole range from uh, normal scanners. Hey, there's Ed. I think, yes? Give the man an applause. Finally, he made it. <laughs> okay. I'll just sit here. It's more. Yes. Yeah, we had some problems copying files from my to Ed's machine because that's the one that's going to be playing uh, some uh, captures that I made in the Netherlands and in Europe of some interesting signals that I think you will find uh, hopefully highly amusing. Problem is, of course, that a lot of the interesting stuff I captured is in Dutch, so it doesn't going to mean anything uh, to you. So therefore, I made a selection of some of the encrypted signals and will explain how the encryption is done and if you have a chance of bypassing it or not. And, uh, and, and I brought some, uh, some video clips that uh, our police helicopter in Amsterdam is, is transmitting. Um, actually, it's for their internal use, but if you have the right receiver, it's, it's a nice broadcast to see what's going on in, 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 in that area. And there's, there's, there's some highly interesting and, and entertaining video clips. But here's Ed. Is it working? Okay. Uh, I don't know how much Barry told you. I'm sorry I'm late. We had, to, as I said, technical issues. Um, the, there's something called the electromagnetic spectrum that I don't know how many people here are familiar with its, uh, its makeup, but there's a, there's a broad spectrum of what we would call bandwidth, but it's floating around in the air everywhere from DC or very low cycles per second up to microwave and light frequencies. And we're talking about hundreds of gigahertz of bandwidth. And, uh, there's a lot of stuff floating around there. A lot of it is uh, easily intercepted and demodulated in either analog or digital modes. And uh, we want to show you some of these interesting signals that are floating around, what's out there, um, what can be demodulated, what can't be, what can be learned from things that you can't demodulate, but just from doing traffic analysis, that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to show you uh, uh, what looks like a timeline, really. But it's a, uh, 
a graph showing the US frequency allocations. And these are different somewhat in different countries. So what applies here, uh, our FCC equivalent in the Netherlands may not necessarily show, uh, show the same. So for instance, uh, police frequencies that Dutch police may use will be used by maybe a television station in this country. So I'm going to switch over to the spectrum. Let's see. How do we get our video up? Can we get uh, switch over to source? <coughs> Not getting video here. No. Wrong one. I'm going to switch to a laptop video here. Maybe I can do this. Uh, uh, a little later. Here's the spectrum of the U.S. All right. In this country, the FCC and other aspects of the federal government here dictate what goes where. And uh, I recommend you do a you do a search for this if you're interested. Uh, just go uh, go online and do a search for uh, uh, U.S. frequency allocations or spectrum chart, and you'll find this really big PDF. I'm going to blow it up here and show you some details of what's where. Power supply. Uh, can you read those? I can't see it from here. Okay. Um, right, uh, right here, you're seeing uh, megahertz frequencies. Um, for instance, uh, you have uh, TV broadcasting in this country from 614 megahertz up to 698 megahertz. Um, you have uh, cellular telephone frequencies right up here. And further down, if we uh, navigate around here a bit, we have lower frequencies. These are international short wave frequencies, anywhere from, say, uh, uh, 2 to 30 megahertz. There's a lot of interesting uh, international programming floating around. You can listen to that on a just regular short wave radio. You can get, 50, get for 50 or $100. Um, there's, uh, above that, you have uh, VHF, uh, which is about 30 to 300 megahertz. Uh, that has FM and TV broadcasts, uh, channel maybe 2 to 13 in this country. Uh, some aircraft communications. Uh, the federal government uses a lot of frequencies in the VHF frequency range. Uh, uh, federal law enforcement agencies, typically in the 160, 170 megahertz region, Secret Service, FBI, DA, DEA. Some analog, some digital, some encrypted. Uh, analog stuff you can hear in the clear. Uh, above that, you have UHF, which is 300 to 3,000 3, megahertz, or 3 gigahertz, if you want to call it that. Those are, would be your UHF TV frequencies, like channels 13 to 69. Uh, cellular and PCS. Uh, cellular is usually in the 800 megahertz range, and the PCS frequencies are in the 1900 megahertz range. Uh, GPS, you know, there's GPS satellite navigation devices. Uh, they're in that range in what's called the L-band, around 1.5 gigahertz or 1500 megahertz. Microwave ovens, Wi-Fi, around 2.4 gigahertz. And one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, microwave video surveillance signals uh, are in the L-band also, which is around 1.5 gigahertz, give or take a few hundred megahertz. Above that, you've got really high frequencies, above 3, 3 gigahertz, up to several hundred gigahertz. Uh, uh, some satellite TV stuff is in the 4 gigahertz up to, what's, what's a KU band or KA band, up to like 12 gigahertz? Not exactly um, sure. Like if you have a direct TV receiver, that's up about 12,000 megahertz. Uh, you have satellite phones, you see reporters in Iraq and so forth, they're using satellite phones that are up in that range. Uh, a lot of military and intelligence satellites, very high, several hundred gigahertz radar, uh, a lot of defense, military stuff in the really high ranges. Uh, I'm going to show a few example devices that it can be used to intercept some of these signals. Talk for a minute, I'm going to grab it. Okay. Um, uh, what, one of the interesting things as, as a radio spotter, as you think we, we, we might be called, is uh, that I'm always watching 
at antennas on rooftops, on cars, on uh, on CB radios or, or on, on two-way radios, and you're always trying to estimate what's the frequency of that. And uh, at one moment, you're you're getting really good at it because all these manufacturers, they also make it more or less clear uh, that that what type of antenna is used for what type of band. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm always interested in if I see somebody walking around with a radio, a two-way radio, I think, hmm, what frequency could that be on? Now. The most excellent um, tool to, to find that out is what Ed has got here. It's an uh, optoelectronic scout, and uh, as the name mentions, uh, it, it uh, captures frequencies. And what it does is it sweeps an entire band, and if a uh, signal is above a certain level, it will display the frequency of that, which is a really nice feature. And also this scout can uh, memorize 400 different frequencies. So you can stick it in your bag and, and walk around in an area uh, that might be secured or whatever, and you're interested to listen to this communication. Uh, but if you're walking around there with your scout, people are going to say, hey, what's going on? Um, but you can just carry it under your clothes and uh, you know look, look at what's being captured uh, later. And also the nice thing is that you see the frequency that's uh, captured, but also the amount of times it was captured. Which, which also is a nice feature. So if you only have one, if you see that a certain frequency is only done one, it's probably a taxi driving by. Or well, if you see people talking for 10 minutes and you're standing next to them, uh, you should have at least uh, 50 counts of that same frequency. Now what Ed just did is he triggered the device with his two-way radio. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, oh yes, you can see it. I, I this is a, these are some of the radios the organizers are using at the conference, and uh, they're just a few watts on UHF frequencies. Uh, we chose these frequencies because they're out of range of some of the uh, two-way radios that uh, amateur radio operators can use, which can be easily modified to operate out of frequency. So we chose this frequency that's a little out of range of the modified radios. So I'm going to change to another channel here and key up the mic. You can see the bar graph at the bottom shows your signal strength. I'm broadcasting or transmitting at a low frequency. Low no signal level now. And this thing will beep to alert you that it's, it's grabbed a frequency, or you can switch it to vibrate mode. So if you're walking around, let me see if I can get the beep. There you go. Um, or you can put it in vibrate mode, so you can just have it in your, in your coat, and if you feel it vibrating, you can look at it discreetly and see uh, who's transmitting near you. Now, I leave this thing on in my house all the time, on the windowsill, and uh, it has a logging feature. Let's see if I can... Uh, show you some of the frequencies it's logged. Uh, let's see. I, I have a special mount for this in my car, so when I'm driving in my car, um, it, it also records frequencies of things around me, which can be pager systems, um, cell towers, whatever, but also um, yeah, some, some undercover police car that is maybe following a suspect. Uh, you, you capture a lot of very, very interesting frequencies with this thing. And you uh, can, a lot uh, of them are, are, are not interesting, but you can find frequencies that normally nobody would ever find out because it's either out of band like Ed is doing now. I mean, when I look at Ed's radio, I would have figured uh, it would be somewhere between 440 and 470, but he was clever enough to tune it all the way up to 490. Uh, and if I wouldn't have a scout, I would never search there. I, d I don't think so, at least. Well, yeah, w one of the things Barry and I do is we look at, we look at antennas, and you can judge from the antenna generally what frequency range your, your target is, uh, is transmitting on. If you see someone on the two-way radio um, and you want to listen to what they're, they're talking about, whether, whether they're uh, commercial, amateur, government, whatever, um, if you have one of these things, you can, you can generally grab the frequency they're transmitting at and plug it into a receiver and listen to it. If it's a if it's digital transmission, uh, you need special, even more specialized equipment. But um, this also logs frequencies and allows you to download them. So you can do some frequency analysis. So after a few weeks of this sitting on my uh, uh, windowsill, I could see that uh, um, cordless phones, um, let's see, uh, that's a taxi cab frequency. This is a cellular, uh, cellular phone that was nearby. These are recent, very recent ones. I reset it the other day. But uh, I did analysis a few months ago after monitoring for about a month. And there was something like uh, two or 300 uh, Philadelphia police uh, transmissions that were within a couple blocks of my house. This only picks up things that are very close by, which is good. You don't want to pick up stuff that's miles away because it would be just too much information. Uh, 
there was uh, two FBI frequencies, a um, lot of police, uh, a couple of Secret Service frequencies. I wonder what they were doing in my house. Um, uh, a lot of taxi cabs, uh, municipal government, um, family radio service, um, you know, these little cheap two-way radios you can buy that are UHF. So anyway, this allows you to see what's being used around you. And uh, you can program these frequencies into a scanner or uh, a lot of scanners or radio receivers, you can plug a cable directly between this counter and that and do what's called reaction tuning. So it will actually tune the radio to this frequency so you can hear what's going on in real time. Which is a real pleasure. Uh, personally, I don't have that because I don't like the fact that it also tunes to signals that I already know are bogus, like pager systems or uh, FM radio stations. Then I'm driving around and hearing all these uh, uh, signals that I'm not interested in. So I've, I've become very fast at entering a frequency while driving and maybe on the phone, and but still, uh, <laughs> still did it. Okay, and then uh, I'm, I'm not as fast as the cable, but it's it's, it's close. It's close. Um, here's a nice example of uh, of a beautiful small uh, receiver. Uh, this is the Yaesu, right? Uh, it's actually a yeah, it's a Yaesu uh, VR500. I'm going to take it out of the case here so you can see it better. Let's zoom in on this a little bit. Get some extra light. Can you see that? There we go. Uh, that happens to be a shortwave frequency uh, that off the hook uh, broadcasts on simulcast, so you can hear off the hook in North and South America on this frequency, 7415 kilohertz. But um, you can uh, you can program any frequency into this thing from from very low up to 1300 megahertz, which covers a lot of different users. And it's very small; it's smaller than a pack of cigarettes, and you can keep it in your pocket and uh, listen to FM regular FM radio broadcasts as well. And it runs out of uh, normal uh, batteries. A couple of AA batteries, yeah. and it's very, very efficient power-wise too. It doesn't, uh, doesn't drain a lot of, a uh, lot of power. Yeah, that's that, that's what I like in a receiver that you're able to uh, always that, that that you don't need to change a battery pack. That you can just pop in a few batteries, uh, because it just happens that the most interesting things, your battery is empty at that time. So, I, I really like that in a receiver. This is a, uh, a single-use uh, receipt, not a. Not many different bands on this, but it's it's a shortwave receiver. You can buy these uh, at Radio Shack or other stores. As I said, there's a lot of signals between uh, three and thirty megahertz. I wish we'd get some more light here. Yeah, but but these these type of radios are also uh, used by uh, spy agencies, and uh, then you think why spy agencies? Um, since the internet, there's been less and less of these around, but there are, uh, on, on the shortwave, there are stations, very high-powered stations, that only broadcast numbers and very short messages that don't seem to mean anything, but these are actually codes for uh, undercover people in the field or, or special agents in foreign countries that don't want to pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, I've accomplished something, or uh, where do I have to go to today? Uh, these are prearranged codes that are set, and I hope that Ed can uh, play a is sample there, of them. Is there audio right here? Yeah, that's just audio. <coughs> yeah, they're, they're small one-time pads. That's that's indeed correct. Um, it's it's cryptographically secure that you just prearrange a random string, audio. and then no, it you can, can you can just can plug it in. It's, it's getting less. Yeah, for setup. Okay. Uh -huh. Let me uh, find the. Now Ed is going to try to find some of the samples made of these uh, shortwave transmissions. But some people actually monitor all these messages, even though they don't seem to mean much. Uh, some of it, of course, is just uh, filling up the space. So. People cannot, by traffic analysis, see when things are getting really interesting. So they broadcast it at a several interval or a certain interval. I'm going to play you uh, a Cuban spy transmission. The uh, Cuban intelligence agencies are notorious for using this method of transmitting uh, uh, encoded messages, uh, one-time, either were keyed, uh, one-time keys, and. Uh, 
this is a, this is one you can pick up very easily on a on a consumer radio like this. Okay, that's the Cubans. Uh, here's uh, MI6, British Intelligence. Um, it's kind of an interesting little tune they broadcast before this so their field operators can, can recognize that this is the signal that's intended for them. Um, and the, the tune is uh, an old British folk song called the Lincoln, Lincolnshire Poacher. And uh, after, after the uh, tune, you'll hear some coded messages. These are really kind of boring to listen to, but it's, what's interesting is uh, you can do some traffic analysis on these, and they found that uh, occasionally uh, there's, there's an increase in, in the level of traffic in these transmissions uh, just before or during uh, major international incidents. Um, for instance, uh, the MI6 frequencies were a little more active uh, just before the, the Gulf War invasion. Uh, this is, uh, next one I'm going to play is the Mossad, uh, Israeli intelligence. You can hear you, you can hear these yourself with a shortwave radio. If you don't have a shortwave radio, you can go to a website called dxtuners.com, and uh, it's a fee-based service. But there's a couple of receivers that you can tune remotely for free. Now this is letters and numbers in the uh, Israeli intelligence transmissions. I'm going to play this one now, which is one of my favorites. We nickname her Cynthia because she has the letters in her name C, I, and A. This is your tax dollars at work. Nine, six, seven. Oh, mine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we've had enough of Cynthia. So, uh, uh, these are by far not all of the uh, countries that do this. There's dozens of countries around the world, and they really found that this is the most effective way to get messages to their field operatives. Um, you could have field, of oper field operatives out there with the really compact devices, that is like a satellite receiver to receive digital messages, but, you know, what other way to, to like, blow your cover than to be caught holding one of these things? In, in most of the world, having a, sh a portable shortwave radio is, is the normal thing that everybody has a, radio, a shortwave radio for listening to news. In this country, people don't listen to shortwave very much, but in the rest of the world, that's the normal... There was a study done. Most people in the world get their news and information and, and entertainment over shortwave radio. Not in this country, but... So, no matter what country you're in, if you have one of these things, it's not a big deal, so it doesn't blow your cover. Unless and, you enter America. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, you can hear these pretty regularly on a lot of uh, shortwave receivers. Here's another one. Go ahead. Okay. Here's another one. Oh, okay. There's another uh, receiver. Um, you can't buy this receiver in this country. This is actually the control head for a uh, for a Sony shortwave receiver, which uh, I ordered from uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai. Um, several 2,600 staffers have this radio in their car. It's like a couple hundred dollars. That included the shipping. Um, it's regular AM, FM, cassette, stereo, like 20 watts per channel for your car, but it also receives all the international shortwave bands. So it's kind of like having XM or, or Sirius satellite radio um, as far as diversity of programming available in your car, but you don't have to pay a subscription fee. And you can even listen to spy numbers transmissions if you're so inclined while you're driving around late at night.
Here's another receiver that, uh, that has a unique feature that it receives uh, video transmissions, not just uh, TV, but uh, not just broadcast television, but uh, television that could originate from uh, uh, covert uh, spy cameras that you see, see around. A lot of these ca cameras you see around are wired, but some of them are wireless. And uh, Barry has some interesting examples of uh, wireless video from uh, Dutch, po Dutch police helicopters. Yes, that's correct. Um, we could go into that. The only thing I want to say about this ICOM receiver is that it doesn't work well on the 2400 megahertz band. Uh, the 2400 megahertz band probably rings a bell because it's the same band where the 802.11 is. Uh, it's a band open for a lot of uh, usages and the Amsterdam police uh, has been using it for many years to transmit their video down uh, from the helicopter to the base where they coordinate certain uh, activities. Um, it's very insensitive. It's not a very sensitive receiver. If, right. you, if you have a preamplifier and an external antenna, um, you can do a little bit better. But this isn't really designed for uh, um, really weak signals, like from a Dutch police helicopter. Well, <laughs> you're not going to receive it here anyway. No, but, but if, you, if you're interested in, in receiving um, uh, digital cameras in uh, 2.4 gigahertz, don't buy this receiver because it just doesn't work. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a handheld receiver that does a better job now. You know that? Um, there isn't yet. You'd okay. think there would be, but there's yeah. just not enough market, I think. You need okay. specialized equipment that's a few thousand dollars, generally, yeah. to, to do that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, I just bought a separate receiver at the radio flea market for, I think, $100, $150. But it's been definitely uh, worth the money. Uh, of course, when you buy such a thing, when you buy a receiver, the police doesn't work a lot with these uh, helicopters. Maybe in the Netherlands they do it 10 times a year, 8 times a year. So you'll buy this receiver and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and watch the news and say, you know, there was something with a police helicopter and then I missed it because I was at work. So, uh, but the, the first video I captured uh, actually was like, personally, uh, like, like a wet dream, you know, that you turn on your thing and, 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 and the images you see really is really, really cool. Uh, I hope I can uh, share it with you now. But what, what I heard was that there were some uh, squatter riots, that some squatters squatted houses and the police was, were going to uh, force them out. And these uh, Amsterdam squatters, you know, they, they don't like that, so they, they fight the police. And one of the tactics they use is that they climb on the roof and throw stuff down. Uh, most of the time, it's not heavy stuff. It's not tables and stuff. They're, they're pretty, pretty nice guys. Uh, but, but, but they throw paint. And what you're going to see here is a small battle between the Dutch, uh, the Amsterdam police, uh, who has a water cannon trying to blow these people off the... No, really. And uh, these people trying to blind the, the water-throwing device with paint. And uh, this is what you're going to see, I hope. Talk somewhere, I gotta oh. start. Okay. And talk about the other, uh, the other video you had as yeah. well. And uh, there's also another video that I shot uh, later after that, um, uh, that is from an anti-war demonstration. The American consulate in Amsterdam, uh, there was going to be a big anti-Iraq war demonstration. Uh, so they uh, put a large amount of uh, red containers around that building to make sure that nobody would get even close to it. And uh, yeah, people came to these containers and they just protested. Um, and at the end, some riots broke out and uh, some stones were being thrown to the police and uh, stuff like that. And then what I hope to show you later on, if Ed's uh, computer works, um, is how the... Um, I, I don't know how you call it in English, the SWAT team, no? The, the, okay, the, the SWAT team, they, they have special small units that go into the field, into these, and they target a certain individual, uh, you know, they say, get the guy with the red trousers or whatever, and then they uh, will arrest him, uh, grab him, and uh, drag him into a, a police van in, in a secure area. Um, and, and that's all being taped by this police helicopter. So I'm just sitting at home, you know, having this premium channel. That uh, no, it's it's really is very very nice. Um, and and I hope I can share it with you. Keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah, come on. Um, yeah. No, we we'll just we'll just have to wait. 
Let's uh, show some other Set devices. Uh, yeah. While this is rebooting. Okay, and, and another topic that Ed and I are very interested in is once you get to know the spectrum, you also see blind spots. You see spots that are supposedly unused or unmarked, or you know, people say, well, there's nothing to see in this part of the spectrum, just you know, keep on walking, nothing to see here. Uh, that's, of course, the most interesting. And uh, most of the time, uh, you will find, uh, okay, we don't have a camera. Uh, but, but, but I'm now talking about finding bugging devices. Um, it's, it's one of the things that is logical once you know the spectrum and once you know how to find receivers, um, that you will be able to find hidden transmitters, even if they're small and low powered. It's, it's interesting to find out where are people hiding, uh, in, in what part of the frequency spectrum are people hiding these devices. And uh, what type of people are there? There are, of course, the, the criminals and the people who don't trust their wives, but also the government. Uh, they also use bugging. Uh, I, th I think in the States they use it much more as in, as in Europe, although in the Netherlands laws have been passed and uh, uh, in, in the Netherlands law enforcement is allowed now to, uh, to bug your house and to bug your bedroom. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not getting pretty. Um, some bugs already have been found in the Netherlands. Uh, they operate around 850 megahertz in uh, spread spectrum modulation, uh, which means that with a normal receiver you, you will not find it. Uh, it means that over a large amount of frequencies the signal is smeared out and it's, it's, yeah, it's very difficult to, to find these kind of, uh, of transmitters. Uh, ETA's got a very beautiful device for that, uh, the spectrum analyzer, that we will demonstrate a little later on. And that will actually show you in real time what's going on in a certain area in the in the frequency band. Um, the squatters. Start with the squatters. No, that's not the squatters. Yes. Oh, that's the zero and two frequencies. Okay. And it's not on the screen. Squatters. Yes. But it's not on the screen. Can we get the laptop video on? I think you have to do it manually with source. Okay. This this should work. Yeah, but it's not showing. Well, we don't see the image that's <laughs> in the in the box. Uh, maybe maybe you say full screen. Full screen. Right about, that? Yeah. Okay. No, we're not getting it. Yeah. Anybody with some knowledge about uh, video systems? <laughs> it's probably set to clone. Your, mm -hmm. like this one right here, for your monitor, it's probably mm -hmm. set to clone, set it to master. Right click anywhere on the desktop. Right click? Yeah. Get out of the full screen first. Okay, right click. Right. Anywhere on the desktop, not there. On the desktop. Go to properties. Mm -hmm. Go to settings. Bear with us, bear with us. <laughs> and? Go to advance. The button up advance, there you go. Mm -hmm. Next, go to display, ATI. Very top now, right yeah. there. And there you go. Ah. Change the. Yeah, you got it. Did it apply? Yeah. Try it again. Yes. Yeah, there's something. Right. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Let's watch this thing now. Hmm? Let's just watch just it. Uh, you want the uh, spotter? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. F yeah. Full screen? Okay, what you see here is the video helicopter. Uh, and it's. Uh, th this, this is actually the first image that I ever saw. Uh, so I was, you know, uh, tuning it and then finding it. And then I heard on the scanner, I heard uh, some people say, yeah, move a little bit to the right, to the right, yes, go to that area there. And you, you will actually see uh, somebody on that roof uh, throwing uh, small pellets of paint uh, in, 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 a, in a little while. There, there, there we go. Um, and there's, yeah. <laughs> No, but really, this, this, this is so rewarding that, 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 you, that you get this device. 
And then all of a sudden, you know, you see this. And I, I had the biggest smile on my face since a long time that, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and the funny thing is that The, the, the funny thing is, 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 is that the, the, the water is slow. So this guy sees it coming and then just, <laughs> then just ducks. Oh, yeah, you, you have to drag it a little bit further because it's hanging. Uh, just, just drag it. Do you see a timeline somewhere? Okay. Here, just, just so grab it and up. just... just uh, yeah, okay, just yeah. like that. Yeah, go back. Full screen now. Uh, yeah, here, here you can actually, uh, on, on, on the top corner now, you can see the car throwing the... The, the, the water to this guy. Oh. Ah, okay. Uh, it's Is that the end of it? No, there must be a little bit more. Okay. Is that the end? Want to see the other one? Yes. The um, the yeah, the, the Zulu. Okay, so that, 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 that was throwing the water. Um, here you can see the helicopter that actually was a part of the helicopter flying into uh, to, to the Amsterdam area. Uh, sorry about the encoding of the video, it's, it's not very well done. Um, but you can actually see it fly over Amsterdam. Um, then it's getting its direction that people say, you know, zoom into that and that area. So um, it's going to look where am I exactly and then go into this area where the, the, the consulate is. There you can see the red containers in, in a line, I think. That's the... And here we see the zooming capabilities of this uh, camera. I mean, just you know, just a few seconds before, we had uh, a big part of Amsterdam. But now, uh, and, and what you will see now is that they will put an extra lens in front of the camera. So you will see it blur for a second. Uh, and, and now it zooms in even closer. And, and they can really zoom into, uh, to, to uh, yeah, the video is hanging again. It's No, it's not Windows this time. That's wrong. Which one do you want? Is it no, I just want it uh, further that way. The slider needs to be. Okay. Um, uh, disconnect. Uh, just close the program. I'm afraid we're facing a blue screen of death. Too much memory. Oh, I miss it. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, the thing is, um, I, I feel bad about this, so... If people want to see the clip, uh, they, they can get a copy from me. Just uh, I'll, I'll put a CD here, and if you see me walking around, I'll make a few CDs and, and put the uh, material on, and uh, feel free to distribute it. I mean, it's been broadcasted, uh, so I don't feel... Keep talking. Okay. Um, well, actually, I'm not sure if it's legal to record it, so I'm... <laughs> Uh, well, there, there, there actually is a radio amateur by the name of uh, Schellinger, who, uh, who's a Dutch guy, who's recording all this. He says that, you know, it's an open band, and he's a radio ham amateur, uh, and therefore he's allowed to record it. And he makes all these samples available on the website. So uh, check on, on the website for, or, or check on Google at uh, Zulu00 uh, and Schellinger. Um, and, and you will find a, a whole lot of, of, of uh, Dutch police uh, uh, camera uh, that, 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 that he recorded. And you can download the clips as you see them here as well. But I, I, I would like to give it another try if possible. But Let's see. No, it's not playing. Okay, we could try my... Uh, Off the CD? Well, I, I got them also on my... Uh, um, well, it, I, 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 I don't have the web address, but it's uh, Zulu double zero, Zulu zero zero. That's the call sign of the of the helicopter, and the guy's name is Schellinger. 
uh, or Living Stoned, I think, is, is also one of his names. Yeah, if, 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 if you enter police helicopter, uh, Zulu, you, you will definitely uh, find some, some hits. I'm going to see if my laptop does a better job of uh, playing these uh, video files for you. But anyway, uh, now it's your turn. There's some other... Uh, hold on a second, I'm going to share some of the... Uh, oh yeah, your surveillance camera. Some of the pictures we have. Later on, later. Okay, what we're looking at here is a, uh, uh, a receiving station where this, the transmissions we were just looking at could be received from. Uh, typically, you'll find these on the tops of some government buildings. Um, this was uh, supplied by a manufacturer of this equipment. Uh, a lot of times, these video surveillance sources aren't coming from a helicopter, but coming from a fixed, uh, a fixed place. It could be a hidden camera. Um, they hide them in a lot of interesting things, and I'll show you some examples of that. But here's, a, here's what's on top of, a, for instance, a, a federal law enforcement building here in, uh, here in the States. Here's another uh, picture of it. What's interesting is this, aside from, different from this and a satellite antenna, is this is not pointing up in the air. This is pointed uh, horizontally or sometimes at a downward angle at a target. There's another picture of it from the side. Uh, this is a picture I took just a few days ago in Philadelphia. I'm going to zoom in on this. This is the federal... Uh, federal building in Philadelphia and if you see on the top right here that's a microwave video surveillance uh, antenna and if you're on the ground you look up you can barely see this thing so uh, this was pointed sort of a uh, northwest so uh, the last time the feds in Philadelphia were using this thing um, when I took this picture they were monitoring or had been monitoring uh, some video surveillance transmission in northwest Philadelphia, or somewhere northwest of this tower site. And that's another shot of it from the ground. Another shot of it. And uh, sometimes these are hidden in uh, common-looking objects that you don't think twice about seeing. In this case, uh, I'm sure you've all seen these uh, power company transformers. Uh, sometimes they use dummy cans like this on telephone poles. And I'm going to show you a couple other examples of hidden platforms that these, uh, these hidden uh, things are in. Here's a, this is from a, uh, a law enforcement conference. I took some pictures of, uh, of a box that has uh, uh, this sort of thing. This, this box will be mounted on a utility pole. Um, it's just a gray box. And here you see a microwave antenna, similar to a Wi-Fi antenna. Here's a camera and a, and a high power lens, zoom lens. Here is a, a, a radio used to receive the signals to control it remotely. Uh, they could turn it on and off, um, zoom in, uh, sometimes point it in different directions. Uh, there's another shot of a different model. And here's some more interesting uh, hidden enclosures. This is one that's used, uh, that's hidden inside what looks like a block of concrete and cinder blocks. Here's a, you've probably all seen these pedestals where a cable TV company or phone company has a, one of these things on someone's front lawn. Well, not necessarily is there a, a junction box inside there. It could be one of these, one of these hidden cameras. You can see the uh, microwave antenna here for transmitting the signal. Okay, Ed, uh, I get a signal that we're running out of time, so maybe okay. just show your video. All right, I want to show one more video that was, uh, this was taken locally in Philadelphia. from a, uh, let's see here, fixed base L band. Find it here. Okay, here we go. Bear with me a minute. It's loading. This was taken in South Philadelphia. I'm going to loop this thing because it's not very long. This was taken from a utility pole, uh, and it's a surveillance of an, an organized crime suspect. 
And it's interesting, you can see when he leaves the, uh, when he leaves the building here, he's looking uh, left and right and all around to see if anybody's watching him. But in fact, uh, he's not looking up on the agility pole where this camera is. And uh, this, was, uh, this was intercepted mm, not too long ago in, uh, in the South Philadelphia area. And uh, this guy is in prison right now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, this was used as with a lot of other evidence, wiretaps and so forth, to, uh, to put together a case against uh, organized crime people in Philadelphia. But uh, these signals are floating around. You don't realize it. There's probably active surveillance going on right here, right now in New York. Um, there are probably going to be a lot of them going around the RNC convention here coming up. And uh, a lot of it is not digitally encrypted because it's more complicated to do that. And it's less reliable than just regular analog video. And, and the receivers to pick this stuff up aren't something you can go to Radio Shack and buy. So I um, just wanted to let you know that this, this stuff is going on all the time. And you just have to be aware of it. OK, shall I try to hook up my video? To your to, yeah. to my, uh, <coughs> With binoculars, if you look very carefully on some of these boxes on poles, if you see a, a small hole, um, that could be the, the lens hole. But frankly, they, they conceal these pretty well, so they're hard to tell. How do you achieve this kind of video without buying this um, iPhone? Um, there's other types of equipment out there. Um, there's a company called uh, Wavecom that makes these uh, consumer uh, video link units, and uh, you can modify them. Uh, otherwise, there's just, you just have to use very specialized test equipment. OK, I'm going to keep it uh, uh, this mode, because sometimes the image freezes, and I manually have to drag it a little bit further. But as you can see here uh, is an overview of the area. And wh oh, wh what you will actually see here is um, the van with the undercover police uh, just uh, uh, targeting suspects. So all these people you see here are actually uh, police officers. And uh, at, at this moment, you know, they're just watching the scene and pointing out, well, there's one guy we might grab later on. And uh, what they do when they grab somebody is actually quite interesting. They target him, then they walk behind him and uh, for about 50 meters. And then uh, with a team of uh, people, they start running. And when they run, they, uh, grab, they, they grab the suspect behind and drag him around. But you will see that happen later on. Um, here they're just zooming in on somebody who hasn't done anything. And he uh, obviously finds out that they're watching him and he has got a sign that says, please stop this. Uh, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is rather funny. But, but, but you can see, I mean, this, this is digitally uh, uh, captured. So the, the actual quality is, is even a little bit better. And uh, you can definitely, uh, from this police helicopter, identify people. Okay, here we go. Um, this is, okay, here, here they're bringing in a uh, suspect. Uh, you can see in the middle of the screen, these uh, undercover, they, they, they uh, catch someone, and they will uh, deliver him to one of these uh, vans, as, as you will see. Uh, there's a special knock on the door that will open it, uh, signaling where the good guys open up, uh, and, and there he goes. And then uh, you will see now some police tactics. Uh, on, on the top of the screen, they're, they're running. Here, on, on the left of the screen, they're running, running, and grabbing him. Did, did, did you see that? I could go back just to. They get a running start, so when they grab him, you're done. OK, up, up on the screen, there they come. Running, running, running for the guy with the white trousers. Bang. <laughs> and you really don't stand a chance. And, and this is actually quite interesting to see all these police tactics uh, through their own eyes, actually. Thank you, guys. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, but, but, you know, being able to see this is really, really interesting. Uh, now the Amsterdam police has bought uh, scramblers, so they're scrambling a lot of these uh, video signals. Um, I think our time is up, but that will not prevent me from uh, keeping this video playing uh, so people can see uh, just for a few more minutes while the other person is setting up uh, the stuff. Um, what you will also see... Ah, there's, there, there's one more. There's one more coming up. And as you will see, one of them will get away and uh, actually throw, throw something away. The guy with the brown shirt here 
is going to throw something away right now, la la la. Uh, <laughs> you know, so even, even if they arrest him, he thinks that they didn't see that he threw something away. Um, the, the other shot that you will see, but I will not be talking when you see it, um, is when they switch through inf uh, to infrared. These uh, helicopter cameras also have infrared on them. Um, and they can select if something, uh, there, there, there you go, if something in white is, uh, is a hot object or if something in black is a hot object, as you can see now. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to let this play for, for a few seconds or a few minutes till it's, uh, till it's run out. Sure, sure.